afternoon everybody, my name is Rosie Earl. I'm going to talk to you today about disguising and differentiation. Um, and sort of the tagline that I've used all the way through this piece, how to divert their attention from the why to the how. I'm going to sort of return to that throughout. So a little bit of background first, I teach A-level psychology mainly. Um, and I use a lot of group work. So I decided this year I was going to experiment a little bit and set up some home groups using uh, the Harry Potter houses. So I put all my year 12 and year 13 classes into Harry Potter houses. This was met with universal delight um, and they were very intrigued as to see which house they were going to be in. Very exciting. However, after probably a month or so using these quite regularly, they began to think about the why. And what I mean by that is they started to think, why am I in this particular group? So it was made really clear to me when a girl came up to me and said this. I'm in Hufflepuff, I don't really understand why, I feel like I'm not, I'm not sort of as, as clever as them, I feel like, um, I, feel like I belong in Ravenclaw or something else like that instead, so I'm like, I need to change this, I need to stop them thinking about why they're in these particular groups, and I thought that the key to doing that was going to be to use variety. Um, so what I did, and this is so simple and so low tech, it's almost embarrassing, but that's some of the things we've seen today, the wonderful iPads and everything else, literally just set up um, some little cartoon families like this. So colour, printed off and laminated um, individually, put into form. These are always in my classroom, use them all the time, um, and allow me to put the students into groups in quite a flexible way. That's one of the things I like about them. So these might be stuck under the desk, ready for the students to find, or that only works about one or seven, six or seven weeks, seven or again, but it's that book under the desk any time. Um, or they're in an envelope, ready for them to look at at the appropriate time. They open up their envelope, they see what character they are, and they find the other people in their group. So instantly, their attention is focused more on how they are getting these groups, rather than why. That's one of the advantages of it. The other one is it allows that real fluidity in the teaching. So I might be doing a task where I want them to be in similar ability groups, different ability groups. It might be something where the particular task itself demands a particular layout. And once they started doing this and it was really successful, the students call them the cartoon cards and want to know which, which group they're in. These are 18 year old students, so I'm fully engaged with this. Um, it translates really well into pair work as well. So celebrity couples. Um, one word of warning though, you've got to be on your toes because these celebrities are really, really fickle. And so often I've walked into class and been like, find your celebrity pair, well, I don't know, they're single, aren't they? Or they're looking for someone else and I've not, I've not kept up to date with it, so little word of caution there. Um, so just in conclusion then, what have I learned from it? It's a really engaging way to get your students into groups, keeps it different, keeps it really fluid in accordance with what you're doing and also with their progress. You might set up a group at the beginning of the year, a child might make an awful lot of progress and actually if you want to work with somebody who, who is similar to them, you might have a group and it focuses their attention back on how they are getting these groups rather than why.